Thank you so much for having me here today. I am really excited to give this webinar. I was here maybe two or three months ago and did a, a related whim, wind webinar, but I promise this will be new and different content. Uh, the, the topic that was promised to you was wind loads on non-building structures, and you can see on the screen that I've slightly amended that um, by adding the phrase for the practicing engineer at the end of this title. And um, while that's a lot of words in a, in a title, I feel very strongly that uh, at the end of this two-hour session, my hope is that you leave with the ability to immediately incorporate portions of this webinar in your in your daily practice. So um, that will be the goal here. This will be very focused on uh, our day in day out practicing engineer with the um, with the focus on non building structures. So we're not going to dig in super deep to your main wind force design of your building or even the components and cladding design of your building. We're going to be focusing primarily on uh, non-building structures. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and remind you this is a slide that I've repeated a, a bit from the last webinar we had, but I'm going to remind you that NCSEA, um, who represents the practicing structural engineers, uh, in 2011 provided a survey to about 10,000 engineers. Before I go into the details, I'm going to further um, let you know that this survey was actually repeated in the last six months and the results of that uh, most recent survey are just now being studied and I just took a look at them this morning. So this survey is slightly out of date but what I'd like to do is show you the process by which uh, practicing engineers voices can be heard and ultimately make their way into the code. So this is the specific question that I would like to focus on here today. Um, was what modifications or additions would you like to see in the wind sections of ASCE 7? And um, there are the five most frequent uh, responses are on the board. Um, we're only going to be focusing today on one of those, but I will give you all five of the responses. Uh, the most common response was a request to simplify the provisions, and um, echoing that sentiment, there is a lot of consistency still in the survey that was just recently conducted that I alluded to earlier. Um, while we aren't going to directly address provision simplification today, the goal will be to dig into some of the provisions that do exist in the code that are lengthy or wordy and try and pare them down a bit for you. Find ways to simplify um, or truly understand the intent of these provisions, so we will spend a little bit of time there. Um, the next most common response was to go back to UBC. I will make no promises there. The third most common uh, request was to stop changing. Again, also not the, the subject of our talk here today. This fourth one is what we are going to focus on here today. So there was a large number of practicing engineers who responded to this survey with a request for more guidance on uh, a whole variety of things. Uh, for example, open structures, canopies, tall parapets, solar PV, and screen walls. And you can see a theme there. These are the um, non-building structures that we don't get to choose whether or not they're on our buildings, they often are incorporated in our buildings. And while the building code does a really great job of telling us pretty explicitly how to design our building proper, it doesn't always do a great job explaining what to do with these other structures. So this is going to be the focus of our talk here today. And for the purposes of completeness, um, the fifth most common response um, was actually, kudos, you've already done this uh, in ASCE 710. So with that being said, we are going to focus on item number four. Uh, NCSEA took uh, these recommend these, this feedback and made some recommendations to ASCE 7. And this is the part of the process that for this more recent survey we're in right now is digesting these results and then presenting them to the next ASCE 722 committee. But for the, the previous cycle, uh, the recommendations that were made were, number one, please reduce the number of methods to one computational or equation-based method and one tabular method, not what we're going to talk about here today. The second one was a request to consolidate wind provisions between ASCE 7 and IBC. The third one we are going to talk about today was a request to provide some criteria for commonly encountered conditions, for example, canopies, tall parapets, mechanical screen walls, and solar PV. The next request was to provide design procedures for rooftop units on buildings over 60 feet. Again, a topic we will discuss today. 
The fifth recommendation was to simplify the freestanding wall provisions. And while unfortunately um, that didn't happen in this last code cycle, we are going to take a stab at simplifying those provisions here for you today.